It's the Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain, being brought to you live by Skeeter Boats. Here we stand, ready to dive into the fourth and final day of this Bassmaster Elite at fantastic Lake Champlain. As expected, it has been a superb clash among the best in the business on possibly the best place to stage a tournament at this level. Lake Champlain for decades has never failed to delight the fans, delight the fishermen. We are ready for a final day that looks very, very different from the days that came before. Yes, it's been tied all the way through, but the, the weights have compressed. They've come together 12 ounces. You can see right there separating the top four as we start today. Because that's our left, our leaderboard as it stands right now, though, according to Bass Track. And a big, big league put down by Seth Fighter. So things are changing out there. We have a lot to show you. We have six hours of Bassmaster Live. Let's take you down to uh, this fantastic place, Lake Champlain. D dive into, Mark Zona, our hummingbird lay of the lake. Yeah, let's do that, Tommy Sanders. It has been a fantastic week here on Lake Champlain, east of the Adirondack Mountains. I'm full of fun facts all day long I'll today, say. friends. Taking a look at Ticonderoga, which was a absolute bust for a lot of the anglers that went down there. I don't believe a single angler made a check down there this mm -hmm. week, rare for Lake Champlain. As you fly up through Burlington, Vermont, the right-hand side of your screen, our takeoff, Plattsburgh, New York, and that is where the majority of work has been done. Mother Nature has been fantastic. Well, really on the New York and Vermont side all week for our anglers. Not going to be the case today, friend. No, no, it's going to have a completely different complexion weather-wise today. Of course, we always expect one day of every event to be uh, sort of upset by the elements, by the changes, by the conditions having shifted around, and they will shift around today for sure. The wind has been shifting around over the past 12 hours and is getting set to roll. Let's just put it that way. You have been crystal clear all week long. Bassmaster.com this morning. Correct me if I'm mm -hmm. wrong. We are on ESPN2 later today. You've been so clear, it's confused me and Ronnie and yeah, Stu. Here on Bassmaster.com all morning long, we hit ESPN2 at noon. Straight up noon. That's local time. That's Eastern time. Thank you for joining us this morning for Bassmaster Live. Mark Zona right here. I'm Tommy Sanders. We are in the Bassmaster Studios. And we have got, you know, it's so close. It's, you know, the, the anglers will put it better than I can. It's going to be a shootout today. Basically, we're starting from scratch today. Uh, fair to say. And, we, you know, we all talked about it coming into the studio today. Probably one of the closest, uh, the closest mm. top ten I could remember in the lead series. I mean, like, the other really tight event was the Pittsburgh Classic. Where yeah. it was that compressed with your top 10? Yeah, with, with much smaller weights. Different, exactly. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing is we, we said this earlier, earlier in the week. Every time we come to Champlain, though, the weights are always that compressed at the top. But I want you to look at what guys are going to do on the water today. I think you're going to see a lot of the game plans if you've watched uh, competition days one through three. I think you're going to see a lot of game plans adjusted from what we saw earlier this week. Boy, we got a lot to roll out today. We got the full crew in place. We got Ronnie and Such, Mike Sukon, the Such here. And what are you what are you chewing on this morning? Uh, I'm, I'm keeping my eyes peeled on Bass Track as everybody else is today. We know it's always a little bit off and, and I think we like that because we always have that mystery at the way and it's really going to be a mystery today. All right. So the, the mystery for us, is this or is this not the tightest we've ever seen on the Bassman? On Bassmaster Live, I think it is. I can't remember a four four day full field event where the top 10 are separated by 2 pounds, 12 ounces or less going into the final day. It's a really tight competition. I'm excited to see the smallmouth, largemouth battle play out. I didn't think that 20 smallmouth could get it done, but David Mullins, one ounce out of the lead, hasn't caught a largemouth and weighed them in all week. It'll be interesting to see if brown fish get it done for four days. All right, so many things to sort out today and so many things that could upset the apple cart for certain anglers. We're down to 10 on this final day. Of course, the first day of competition is very tight between Jamie Hartman, who's trying to go wire to wire, and this guy, Seth Fighter. Exactly right. Seth Fighter early and often this morning, just like yeah, Jamie bro. Hartman's done. On the New York side, he's at, Seth is actually on the Ver, on Vermont water, but this is really what a lot of people call yes, the sir. New York flat up near Rouse's Point. I thought he was. Seth Fighter, for the first time this tournament, a good three and a half. putting a Carolina rig in his hand. What's worked for Hartman? Start out just about every day. 
Ultra Vibe, Zoom Ultra Vibe Speed Craw has been a big player for a lot of our guys that have been Carolina rigging all week long. You're looking at a flat that's about, call it 10 down to maybe. Yeah! Freaking big one, dude. Yes, sir. Look at that thing. 16 feet of water, a lot of cabbage on that flat. Freaking shaking. There they are. Freaking llamas, bud. Yeah, I'm gonna exactly. hit him with a little bit of Mountain Dew. Yes, sir. Three and a quarter, three and a half. Basically all that footage from the first hour of fishing this morning. You want to be the first guy to break out of the pack, and boy, Seth Fighter has done that emphatically. Morning update. Morning update. Day four, Lake Champlain. Uh, we're on the Smalley program today. Um, got four fish in the well already. Had a fifth one on, and uh, caught, a, caught a great big one. I was not expecting that. I haven't, Really seeing too many smallmouths that size up here, but that's the kind you need on uh, championship Sunday. Kind of, kind of like catching a kicker largemouth already. And I got two other pretty good smallies and one about three pounds, three and a quarter. So if we get two more nice ones, we're gonna have a big bag. Especially if I can get lucky and catch one more like that big one I caught. This deal's ours. Mm -hmm. But. The storms are coming, rain's coming, wind's gonna get mega. Um, be nice to catch a few before that, before that big wind clears, but we'll make do with what we got. We're semi-protected where we're at, but I mean, it's about as rough as I want it to be right now. And it's gonna, it's gonna double this here in a couple hours. So hopefully get another big one or two before that happens and then, uh, we're just gonna ride out the storm after that. Of course, it's always a lot easier to jump out to build your build your limit fast in the morning, but for, for our prior purposes, the lead to start has gone from one ounce to about eight and a half pounds. No doubt about it, but you gotta keep your eye on Kobe Krieger and Jamie Hartman, both of them having big mornings here on Champlain. And Kobe Krieger doing something much different today than yesterday. Come on, baby. Lived with a bone colored oh, Zeris Boot Jr. Jr. Come on, baby cakes. Kind of hard to throw a Super Spook Jr. in a yes, pop bar a with, <laughs> with well made. rollers, so I can understand. Similar principle, I guess. Kobe weighed in quite a few fish on a jerk bait earlier this week. Oh, there he is. Oh, that's a big one, I think. Good golly. That's not trouble. a big one. He smoked it. Trouble with treble Absolutely hooks yesterday. smoked it. <laughs> Mm, did he smoke that thing? Pretty good one. Dude, there's like three with him. I got two. I got two. I had two. I got 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 Oh! I lost the one. I lost the one. Damn, oh. damn it. Damn it. I had two. I had them both in my arms. Dang it. Dang it. Oh. No. Lord. Dang it. Dude, I had two on. I had two. I had both in my arms and the one got off. Dang it! Oh. Mm. Dang it, dude, I had him! Oh, shoot! 
they're both the same size too. Notice the jerk bait in his arm. Uh, yeah, I did. Yep. Oh man, that's, that's four pounder. <clears throat> wow, wow. I had two of them, two four pounders on at one time, and I had it. I had them in my hands. Dang it. Oh. <laughs> listen, listen, Kobe. Every every fish catch with Kobe is an adventure. Yeah. With a series of highs and lows. Usually that's a day on the Bassmaster Elite Series, but it's every single catch with Kobe Green. No, it's not every single one. It's pretty one. close. <laughs> Yesterday, very challenging with treble hooks. Oh, we've Sometimes seen two, two at once, so let's just put it that way. Oh, we've seen two largemouth get You're, flipped in. On. Small yes, mouth, though. Yes. Suit you. It, but we need to play that in real time with Kobe's yes, sound. The audio is as good the as any part. Audio's of it. better than the footage. <laughs> it is. It really is. It's like your first trip to the Midway at the State Fair. <laughs> That's the way you open a show right there. What? It's like <laughs> it was so that? great. So great. Get oh up. my gosh! There's everything popping. All at the same time with Kobe Krieger. We'll be back to Kobe Krieger. You can bet we'll see that catch again. Almost had a double with two four-pounders on Championship Sunday. Starting the day oh in third. That would have been important that's a, for him. That's not a five or six pounder. Over to Brandon Pollinick. Earlier today, fishing in the Come on. Inland Sea. Hardest Big day for Brandon Pollinick on day three. And very, we very go. confident this morning at our Get takeoff in Blacksburg. He actually took the lead this morning with his first two fish. Easy, easy, easy. I, I need to see the Kobe stuff again. I couldn't swing that one, but I don't want to make any mistakes yeah. today. I got to control all the variables we can. Control. Nice and easy, nice and easy, nice and easy. Come on. Yeah, that's a good one. Come on. Come on. Easy, 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 easy. Come here. Yeah. Uh oh. Woo! Yeah. That's. Huh. Wow. This is a little bigger than we thought they were earlier today. First time taking a look at those fish. We are. We've switched it up. Came back out where we've been doing most of our damage. And I'm seeing a few around. We caught one good smallmouth, but decided to go with what's got me here. Drop shot. We got another one. X zone. Be yet. They like to jump here. That's a decent one. <laughs> oh gosh, he almost jumped on the back deck. Come on, stay on there. <laughs> easy, easy, easy. You just got to play him out. Uh, uh, uh. He's playing games with me. He wants to act like he's ready to come in the boat, but he's not. X zone slim slammer on his drop shot. Can we go back to that footage, footage please? No. Please. Best ever. I mean, this is good, but yeah. Oh, it's it's we fantastic. Make it so much more difficult. But we got her. Yes, sir. It's another solid one. Still not the magnums, but it's a solid one. Another three pounder, I guess. Okay, when you're done here, can you show them the set up? Yeah. I gotta put a new bait on anyway, so. This is pretty much what I've been throwing all week. It's in uh it's called an X-Zone finesse slammer. So it's a three and a quarter inch bait. Imitates a lot of a lot of things. I've been going back and forth between a couple colors. Um, you know, it seemed like the first couple days I really caught them on like Gobi Crush and the Slim Slammer and Big Limit. And then yesterday they really turned on to this green pumpkin blue. And in practice they're biting green pumpkin blue really well. But I'm just nose hooking it. That gives you the most the most action. 
and then I've got that leader to my drop shot weight, little 3 8 ounce VMC drop shot weight. And just throwing it on really light line, I got six pound um, Seaguar Tatsu, and then I've got it tied up to my main line as a 15 pound Seaguar Smackdown braid. I think we talked about that day too. It gives you the best of both worlds. You get the the strength and the small diameter of the braid, but you get the invisibility and suppleness of the fluorocarbon. And then I've got it on a, a 610 Alpha Angler DSR medium action rod. And uh, Daiwa Exist 3000 has pretty much been locked in my hand for the last two weeks and we made two top tens. I've won a lot of money on this setup. Very popular yeah. bait in New York, AFCO Taste the Bait. A lot of anglers looking at that footage right there, and yep, there's been a lot of smallmouth caught from here to the St. Lawrence River the last few years on that bait. There's our leader to start the day, leader by an ounce. Suddenly found himself 10 pounds behind. Seth Fighter and Brandon Pollock, we saw eating into Seth Fighter's giant lead in short order there. Things will happen fast on that leaderboard. This is earlier today. Jamie Hartman trying to go wire to wire here at Lake Champlain. Jamie Hartman, Carolina Riggin, and Ultra Vibish Craw. <laughs> that is before the wind started earlier today. A little bit slower so far today for Jamie Hartman. Boy, it was a mentally tough day yesterday. Some mechanical issues. It's great work early, though, as you say. And you have to catch him all day long if he wants to run with this crowd. Obviously, it's going to be a pretty wild one out there. Just picking up with us, the wind is going to increase charts almost 90 degrees going straight up all the way through three o'clock supposed to build Kept all day correct bait. building Kept all day seeing that bait sticking out of his mouth that's a good one yes sir a great, great one there for jamie hartman now back to jamie live got some news from davy height who's on jason william williamson and they're out of cell range right now but williamson has four fish in the live well each of them about three milking, and a half pounders i'm milking this area I'll run up. I got to fish that rig into the wind, so I figured I'd pick a crankbait up and go back down through it. I see a lot of fish suspended here on this outside anyways, but, and I've got that last good one was a weird bite. He was way on the outside, so, um, like I said, I, I've got to open up my options today. If they start biting something else, I get clued in on something else. We're good, you know? Uh, so we're going to keep, I'm going to put that rig back in my hand and go back up this stretch again because it seems like it doesn't matter if you do that or not. You just pick one off here, you pick one off there. So that's what we're going to try to do for just a little bit. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to die in this area. I just, I want to, I know there's good fish here. I mean, you all see what I caught the last couple days. So. There's definitely good fish in this area, so it's kind of tough to leave it real quick. So I'm going to try to figure them out and see if I can get a couple more good ones before we go out. I've got some ideas in my head about what to go and do, but I want a couple more out of here first. Jamie Hartman got a game plan in mind. It's varied a little bit day to day here, but it has been super successful throughout four yes. days of angling. And again, Jamie won two events last year on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Looking for his first one in 2020. You know, we heard Paul Mueller and Chris Johnston last week out on Lake Ontario really having that mental calculator. And a lot of our anglers last night into this morning that are in that top five really believe 
20 pounds today is going to do it. No matter which one it is, a 20 pound bag is what's going to do it because a lot of them feel all of them are going to catch 17, 18. Sure. That's, that's the minimum bag. The average fish, Tommy, you'll love this. Day one, two, and three, three pounds, five ounces, even to when you break it down to a decimal, 3.357. Within two hundred. Within, yes. Yeah. Almost the exact, so you, it's almost like it's a clerical error and you're wondering yeah, if down. it's wrong, but it's exactly right. Oh boy. That was weird. Fish number five for Seth Fighter. Yep. One he doesn't want today. I don't know what happened there. It's kind of embarrassing. I think that's my littlest one. He's probably two and three quarter. Bump a tag on him. There's a lot of guys with the floats in their live wells. Basically, that's, that's five. so the fish don't beat themselves up. See him jump? Or jump out of the live well. Yeah. Ten feet out of the water. Not quite, but. I thought I missed him. He just ran at me so hard he still had it. I'm a pro. You are. Where is he now? Huh? Where is he now? It's in the box. He's gotta go though. That's alright, we got us a limit. Take a little pressure off. It gives him 17 pounds. Dude, when these things eat this, they just swim at you the same speed that, that you reel at. I like doing this better on the Carolina or on the St. Lawrence when you're dragging downstream and they just go the other way and they just you don't even gotta set the hook, you just gotta hold on. Now you put this out yesterday. Arizona, you said this wind gets up and gets going. It's going to turn on the smallmouth bite in certain places, not everywhere, but certain places. Well, you're seeing it on that north flat, obvious, obviously, this morning with Kobe Krieger and Seth Fighter. But the inland sea, traditionally, when that wind really gets ripping, those deep ones, like Brandon Polinick's fishing, um, Taku Ito, generally, it really gets them biting. Uh, on this North Flat, this Rouse's Point Flat, a lot of times, though, it does break those schools up a bit. Oh. What is it, moving bait around deep? or it, It's just cloudy. The clouds, more than anything, um, on that North Flat tend to bust those schools up a lot more than when it's sunny to where they're positioned a lot better and, and grouped up tighter. Fighter with perhaps his best start of the week. He's had some good days, though, that's for sure. Taku Ito. Hey, hey, hey. I thought I saw Champ. Boy, you are into it, aren't you? I'm not kidding. It was there. Okay. This was earlier today. Rookie from Japan. Come on. Been fishing a drop shot Maybe in the Nico Worm. <sighs> this drop shot bait's been a three inch. Berkeley oh, Gulf Minnow. Look. Oh no. Why? Why not? What? 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 Yes. Come on. Go oh, on, good one. Good one. Yes. Fishing from 20 to 35 feet of water. Maybe. Yeah. Number one. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe not. Now one fish in the live well for Taku Ito as it stands. Here he is live. That's one fish he probably doesn't want to bring to the weigh-in. Got to hang with him on the St. Lawrence River event quite a bit. Bouncing from the river out to the lake. Good kid. Does not like shallow water at all, he said. He's going to love Santee Cooper. Right. Mm. Boy, throughout the years, there have been a lot of yeah. bass caught right there. You're looking at Damius oh. Island. Why, yay, yay, yay. What? Why? No good. That's one tough thing about bass fishing. It's legitimately, if you compare it to another sport, it would be like a baseball team hitting every single pitch to the warning track and the outfielder catching them sometimes. When you when you hook the quality and don't get them in the boat, you I mean, you hit the ball as long as you can go without hitting a home run. And what's weird is generally when that wind gas is like that, they're a lot more aggressive yeah, on your a, drop shot. It's been a tough morning for me. Uh, my first spot where I thought I was going to catch them pretty good today. I never had a bite. I only gave it about half an hour, but uh, if they were there, they should have bit. I wasn't really seeing them on the graph, so uh, ran up north here to, to some stuff. I fished the first two days. Um, going to run some of these shoals up here where I had some bites in practice and practice and see, just kind of keep covering water till we can uh, find an area where we can settle in and or figure out how to, how to catch them. I figured today they'd be biting their reaction baits pretty good, which they should be. I just don't feel like I'm around them yet. But well, we're going to make some adjustments here and keep going. I got some largemouth stuff I want to hit here in a little bit. Keep grinding away. A little bit more placid where we find Corey Johnston. Back to Kobe Krieger now on the left, too. Oh, oh Johnston. Boy, he hits him on a jerk bait. Did you notice that yesterday? Yes. Feel his lash. What? What's that? Well, man, this morning I, I started on a couple of different spots. I didn't really know where to start with the weather conditions that we were dealing with, and fished two spots, and nothing really happened. So I come back to where I actually started the first two days, and. Caught a three pounder pretty much right off the bat. And a short while after that, I, I hooked another one and actually ended up being two. So they're here. Now I just got to grind it out. And conditions are a lot different than they've been and going to be probably a lot slower going. But uh, we're going to grind it out here on this big flat. Seth's over there. I'm here. Somewhere on this flat, it's $100,000, I can promise you. We got to do it. What? I, what? I just it's to, early. I, this I, is I need early. To hear, oh, I need to go. hear the whole. I, yeah, Kobe Krieger like earlier hour. today. You know what? I eerily remember him last year at Winya Bay catching one on a topwater bait. Oh, there he is. And shanking himself oh, awesome last year. Good golly. Yeah. The power pole replay of the day, Tom smoke. Sanders. Absolutely. I'm going to let it ride. Smoking. I'm going to let it ride. Mm, it turns smoking. into a mess right here, gang. It's a pretty good one. Dude, there's like three with him. I got two. I got two. I had two. I got 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 it. Oh, I lost the one. I lost the one. Dang, damn it. Dang it. I had two. I had them both in my arms. Dang it. Dang it. Oh, no. Oh. 
Damn it! Dude, I had two on! I had two, I had both in my arms and the one got off! Dang it! As the kids say, it gets really sketch when those fish get near the boat with Kobe Krieger. That was the power. Everything exciting and dramatic about the sport of fishing is contained <laughs> in that one clip right there. Kobe Krieger, who's caught innumerable doubles in his life, but never on this kind of stage right there. <laughs> and never as dramatically. Seth Fighter jumping out to a giant lead. But we're early, early on day number four. Got plenty more to come on Bassmaster. Live. The Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain is being brought to you live by Skeeter Boats. What do a taco and a taco truck have in common? Nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories. Fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and resetter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run for life. They know reliability starts here. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series. Unleash next level performance. Mercury, go boldly. It's been said that a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at work. Getting you to that fishing spot is key. And Bully Dog gets your truck road ready. No matter where, we give you the horsepower and towing torque right when you need it. We make getting there better. Make your ride a bully dog. yet but you will for work or for fun, I always like to have a reliable generator around. This open frame inverter from Champion is ideal because it's lighter than a standard open frame generator and more affordable than a traditional inverter. The remote start helps me start up the generator or shut it off without having to leave my camper. It provides essential power for things like charging my boat batteries, also makes life a lot more comfortable for myself and my family. Introducing the Bass U TV app. 
Get the most out of your Bashu TV subscription and learn on the go with the Bashu TV app. Unlimited access to 700 plus training videos. Multiple new releases each week, including seminars, on-water videos, live shows, interviews, and other original content. The Bashu TV app, never stop learning. Pre-collision system, standard. On the 2020 Tacoma, so you can go from one epic playground to the next. If you want to play, you need the Tacoma. The Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain is brought to you by Power Pole, Skeeter Boats, Yamaha, and by Toyota. Welcome to you. Good Sunday morning to you. Final day championship Sunday here. Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain, legendary Lake Champlain. Every, every championship Sunday, we feel like we are primed for maximum drama. We are ready to expect the unexpected. That's the case today, only more so. We have had a tremendous tournament. Everything is going to be, uh, everything's going to be turned around a little bit today. Already, we're seeing signs of that. Exactly right, Tommy Sanders. Big morning so far, just like every day here on Lake Champlain. We're going to be on ESPN2 at... 12 o'clock Eastern time. Correct. That's when we hit ESPN2. Right now, weigh in it. coming up. Take you right up to weigh in time. Take you right up to 3 p.m. Eastern time. Weigh in in Plattsburgh. The crowning of the champion all happens today. Championship Sunday. And we have had a great morning full of fish catching. A lot of it from our leader yeah. now, Seth Fighter. It has been a beat down every day on Lake Champlain. A lot more smallmouth this morning on that North Flat. Over to Inland Sea right here with Brandon Polinick has a couple bonus largemouth. Here's a train wreck. I got two. I got two. I got two. I got Oh, I lost the one. I lost the one. Dang, damn it. That's so great. You got one. I, I, yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah. I can't too many I, times today. Yeah, exactly right. I think I will, though. Yeah, I bet we will. <laughs> exactly. I saw, I did see Champy right there. Gonna yeah, get back on right. the water right now. Seth Fighter said he will push this North Flat a lot more today. Generally, every day of this tournament, Seth fishes it for 90 minutes to maybe two hours. Said he's gonna push it a lot harder today, especially as slow as his largemouth were on day three over in the Inland Sea. Been out there almost two hours now. They took off at 6:45 local time. Got something to share with you right now. Mm -hmm. Hey, we like the BMW trailer hitches yeah, we on the line. Chance to go wow. live with the likes of our colleague, one of the international figures in the world of fishing, Dave Mercer, out there. Dave, who are you watching, and and, and what can you tell us? Hanging with the barrister, Edward Lochran III, the barrister here this morning, making his first 10 cut. And guys, you can see, I mean, this stuff has not even arrived yet. And he's already right in the thick of it. Um, uh, it's going to be scary out. I, I'm not scary, hairy, I'd say, not scary, more like hairy. But uh, the scary thing for him is when he's been catching his fish. Has nothing in the box yet, but he has said uh, that he's generally not caught them till 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Sounds okay. The problem is that that's exactly when this weather is supposed to hit. And he said uh, from his production prediction that he's looked, it looks like it's going to be up to 30 mile an hour gusts and they're going to be blowing right on him. So we'll see how it all works out for Ed Lochran. But he's happy to be here on a Sunday, although it's a little inclement. Dave, real quick, kind of just describe the bottom. I believe Ed's been in the Inland Sea all week. Th that area is a lot more featureless than some of the other areas in the Inland Sea that we've seen earlier in this event. 
and, and he's quite a bit further than a lot of the boats that we saw up further the inland seas, about seven miles south of the gut, basically, where he's fishing. And he's basically just dragging baits through here. I just got on him, Z, to be, to be honest, so I haven't really had a lot of time to spend with him and, and know exactly what he's dialed in on here. But, I mean, let's just let's just go right back here to the graph and have a look at what he's, what he's fishing, guys. Here's the cool thing right here. If you look at... At these edges, I mean, he's basically, where you look where he is, you can see how they, you've got tight turns right there, all these tight lines, and that's kind of what he's keying in on. And, and the cool thing about this is he's also had this to himself all week, which is weird when you look at all the guys that have been sharing, you know, fish with people. Ed says he's really, he saw Mueller a little while, but for the most part, he's had this to himself. Dave, great job. For some reason, we can see Dave's screen so much better than everyone else's. Exactly. It must be a special setup. Dave Mercer out there uh, uh, telling us. Of course, we're going to be uh, checking in with Dave all day long, all the way up to weigh-in time. Dave, we are looking forward with much anticipation to this weigh-in. Man, oh, man, it's going to come down to it, isn't it? It really is. I mean, whenever you get an event like this, guys, uh, 212, I think, he's back and he's in 10th place. First and second divided by an ounce i mean really whoever wins today is going to have to work for it and uh, hartman knew that on the dock this morning he was very um kind of stoic weirdly you know very to himself uh, i think still angry at the locals for yesterday really but he was happy that 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 it's going to be that this weather may help him and, and keep the locals in as you can see ed lockford making a move i don't think he's going to move far but basically just doing you know your 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 typical how you cover this water but what he's doing right now is going to get a lot tougher later i mean you do the drift and then you start your boat up and you you work around that drift you don't want to run over where you've been fishing but that's exactly what he's doing here but the problem is later on this afternoon that readjustment redrifting gets a whole lot tougher and, and being precise precise gets tougher but as you know sometimes that that speeded up drift can also make those smallmouth fire Dave Mercer covering the water like nobody's business. We'll be leaning on Dave hard today as always, giving us lots of insights into what's going on on this, uh, what promises to be a wild, wild championship Sunday. Out to Jamie Hartman. A little flurry from David Mullins. He moved, he's on the Vermont side, south of St. Albans. Right. He's got three fish, a couple two pound range and a three five. He's about uh, almost eight pounds back in third place. Hartman started with the lead now down into fourth place. Lowest morning of the tournament for Jamie Hartman so far, by far. That's one of the first ones that hasn't jumped three or four feet that Jamie Hartman's hit on this New York side. A lot of these areas like Hartman and Seth Fighter concentrating on have a lot of cabbage on, on, on these flats. See some right there. On cue. Well, oh, good one. Looked like it. Grass monster. Big old grass wow. monster. Dude, that thing hit the water. I bet it didn't drop four foot and I felt it tick it. And I, well, obviously I ain't setting yet. He hit it way before it even thought of hitting the bottom. Another three and a quarter.
I mean, going from so non-aggressive and then having one just smoke it before it even touches the bottom. I mean, it wasn't even close to the bottom. And I felt it go. Whew. All right, well, let's do that again. Sometimes that means there's just a bunch of them there. Sometimes. Fat and slick, just like you like them right there. Jamie Hartman with his third keeper so far today. And as you say, going a little slower. A little bit slower go, but the other side is really, if you've watched his days, except for day two, they were grinders. I mean, it's not, you mm -hmm. know, it's not like Jamie Hartman was in a numbers game that we got to see with some of the other guys three, in our top three ten. Something. Nine pounds now is Jamie Hartman. And no fours yet, man. Had a lot of troubles yesterday. A lot of, a lot of things that impeded his fishing yesterday, including having to sit it out with the power issues for about an hour and a half. Yeah. Broke his leader. And it's a, hey, watch him fish that Carolina rig. Yeah, really. we, we can kind of get into it now. He's purposely wanting that Carolina rig to hang in that grass, and you'll see him bounce it where it'll snap out of that grass. If you've watched the footage the entire week, it's about when 90% of those smallmouth grab that craw is when it pops and snaps out of that grass. Uh, but what's also been surprising is we've seen a number, number of them, like that last fish, that literally have it the second it hits the bottom. But it's a very, it's been a very, like right there, it's been a very reaction deal how he's been fishing that Carolina rig compared to what you usually see with that technique is just dragging and dragging and dragging. It, 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 he's, he's hopped it and popped it around a lot. Corey Johnston hooked up right here. Dude, he cracks them. Little guy. Had a great New York swing here. After a slower start to his season, first two events. Got her back on track now. Yeah, he did. Angler of the Year standings. Yes, he does. We'll get into Such brought that up yesterday. Standings a little later today. One of the four anglers to make the top ten last week and this week, which means they've fished 15 straight days. Two of them, right? Wow. Well, upstate New York. Up, big one. Corey Johnson said he was very happy his brother won on the St. Lawrence River last week, but yet very upset at the same time because he just wants to beat his brother at everything. <laughs> so bad. At everything. We forgot to mention Chris Johnston, his wife had a baby July 7th. He was kind of on the, the baby what? pattern too. That's we nuts. Know that. oh, That's yeah. nuts. What's that? Stat sorcerer. Brock yeah, Mosley, true. same situation. Same baby fighter and, Bo. and Mrs. Expecting. Imminently expecting. Got Brock Mosley, two top tens. Babies everywhere. I just uh, worked my way down this shoal and I hit the tip of it and uh, I just lost one and caught one. One I lost felt decent. One I caught only a pound and a half for, but there's big ones in this area for sure. Caught With the wind nice that we're expecting today to be ramping up all the way to. Way in time, uh, going to have some showers, some uh, intermittently heavy showers, uh, just a little sprinkle or something. So it's it's, it's going to be a it's a, pla a plateful today. Tough service where Jason Williamson is, but Davy Height is with him. Just let me know that he filled his limit with a four to four and a half pounder. Has wow. about 18 pounds, 18 and a half pounds, which would move him from fifth. He's about 9, 12 behind Seth Fighter. That would put him just less than a pound behind right now at this point. Hey. And, that, and, and here's where the problem occurs, and we talked about this yesterday, taking a look at our TH Marine weather report here today. Showers, as you say, Tom Sanders, a uh, little bit heavier rain coming. South-southeast winds 10 to 20, and we're going to see some gusts potentially mm. up to 30 today. The colors are changing on the wind finder. Yeah, that is Getting the direction the which lines yes. up with the length of this, the 100-plus miles length 
of this lake. Look at the map right there. And, and, and we talked about this yesterday on, on day three of competition, looking at the, the map and that wind that is coming from the west is it, it, these fish will still bite in these conditions like we saw in Lake Ontario last week. It's just going to make it. Th these guys have been able to really execute a game plan by getting around. None of these guys are really just fishing one mm -hmm. spot. Um, they, they've been just, you could bounce from the New York side, from Rouse's over the Inland Sea, and it's been easy going, and you're able to get to those areas very quickly, not going to be the case today. For folks who are watching that wind finder map right there, and they're wondering what that means, it's blue everywhere. Blue is very, very minimal, eight, eight or less miles an hour. Green is where it starts to have an uptick. And with that uptick, if you notice, I always get the looks when you get off the lake and you're in your rain gear, you're in your bibs and you walk into a restaurant and somebody's like, wow, where have you been today? Out on the lake is much different than land and you notice that on the map. Yes. The entire lake is green, the entire land is blue around it, much less wind when you're on land compared to on the water. Well, if we were on uh, Ontario today, like we were last week, it's already green. It's already over 25 miles an hour. manageable right now even still where we find Seth fighter also where Jamie Hartman was Brandon Polinick over in the Inland Sea Polinick in second just less than three pounds back of fighter both with limits. There we go. Uh huh. That feels big. Ah, where are you going? Stoppers, heart stoppers. Take my time, take my time. Confidence in the equipment, and not rush them. and easy spin your head this way right below your feet come on come on come on oh wave come on ah, I hate when that happens Up. get in here get in here yes that'll be a good call that'll be a good call one the ones sweet probably a, I don't know three pounder three and yeah, okay. Get rid of a two. On championship Sunday. Let's I don't see. think anybody's cold yet. Mm -hmm. Probably that. A little large mouth. He's definitely bigger than that one. Let's make sure one of these mean small mouth aren't bigger or smaller. Woo! Feisty. <laughs> All right, you just stay in there for a second while I try to get your friends. No, it's not bigger. Where's that other one? That's the one I just caught. That one? Yellow. Oh, we got yellow. That's a large mouth. Gotta be this one right here. Yeah, the white one. Nah, he's big. Okay. He's got a good bag already. Uh, that's a good one. Well fed one. Yeah. The, and and really that that was part of his game plan in the inland sea fishing deeper. That what we've seen with a lot of those fish 
from the inland sea that are 20 feet and deeper, they're already late summer built compared to a lot of those 18 to 19 inch skinny ones that we've seen shallower. Seen fewer of those today. third keeper here. Come on. Two small ones. you notice about Corey Johnson, he does not play him long. He is not going to sit there for three and a half minutes. Not going to happen in that boat. It's a little better fish. Yes, sir. Good one for Corey Johnson right there, Tom. Let's get back up to the North Platte, just south of Rouse's Point. Okay. Been pretty quiet for Seth Fighter. He's trying to reconnect with his friends here on this. Well done. Well done, Ron Moore. Going to get back out of the water right now with cameraman Eric Kapka, set fighter. Seth looking for his third win with the Elite Series. He wants a regular Elite yeah, Series. Yeah. He's he actually been quite vocal. He's had two of the biggest smallmouth wins in Angler of the Year events. Three-day events with smaller field, okay. limited field, 50. As Such and Ron Moore said, he really just wants that $100,000 and not the Angler yeah. of the Year money is what. <laughs> that's, that's the That's big another 100000 to win Angler. Oh, yeah. This would be good redemption for him, finishing second by less than a pound last time we were here. Even though it's so far from New Market, Minnesota, where he's from, it seems like this is one of his home lakes. Fish is very his, similar, yeah. very similar. Especially you, with the grass factor in there. And Keep grinding away. I just keep zigzagging back and forth, moving around, dropping on them. You notice that. Uh, just throw it any direction, might catch one. Exactly what I was going to say. On that North Flat, you could throw either direction of the boat just because it's. It's a lot of the same on that flat. Uniform. Been known to be a few big largemouth on that flat through the years. A lot of the regional tournaments, some of the other national events that have been here. Fighter started his day 12 ounces out of the lead. Now he has the lead, and Palnick was right behind him, five more ounces back. Oof. And they're one seven apart right now. Oof. The only two with a limit. Fighter, as you said, the Minnesota, Minnetonka Lake, you associate him with that. And find some similarities here. And Paul Lake came up out west, big lake out there, Coeur d'Alene. Sort of situated between the Cascades and the Rockies. And uh, he's probably seen a share of windswept days on that place too, catching smallmouth. 
got some of the best smallmouth anglers in the world in the top 10 today. Absolutely. Not just the ones who figured out oh, this week, right. but guys that are yep. just killers on any place yep. smallmouth swim. 10 left on this final day. Only one will hold the trophy. That man, Jamie Hartman, trying to go wire to wire, win in his home state of New York. Jeff Ryder out and Brandon Polinick alike. Giving him a big tussle here in the early. The first couple of hours of fishing here. We got eight hours all day long. We got six hours of Bassmaster Live taking you all the way up to 3 p.m. You're going to definitely time. see that compress right there like we did oh, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Get it, to about mid morning and it starts to tighten up. Always expands uh, early in the day as everyone is building their limits. And uh, you're right, it will get tighter and tighter. Maybe a very close one when we come to the end, but that's a long ways off. The Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain is being brought to you live by Skeeter Boats. I'm pro anger Andy Montgomery. I've been making my living with Strike King products for a long time. So when they showed me the new Tour Grade line, I was all in. I knew I could trust it. What I didn't know was how easy it was to use. With the spooling tool and the prepaid envelope to recycle your old line included in every single box. Not only is it the best line on the market, it gives you the easiest fishing experience possible. Find out more at StrikeKing.com. yet but you will sign up to compete in the inaugural hook bass master bass nation kayak series powered by tourney x presented by abu garcia in 2020 the trail features five regular season events with a championship to be held in conjunction with the 2021 academy sports and outdoors bass master classic presented by hook the first tournament will be at Logan Martin Lake in Hell City, Alabama on March 5th in conjunction with the 50th Bassmaster Classic. To find out more details and to register, visit Bassmaster.com slash kayak. At Mercury, we invested thousands of hours of engineering manpower so you can enjoy hours and hours of untapped horsepower. Introducing the all-new V6 Mercury Pro XS. Light, quick, efficient. Mercury, go boldly. At Mercury, there are no limits to what we'll do to make sure you have no limits either. Introducing the all-new V8 Mercury Pro XS. Light, quick, efficient. Mercury, go boldly. season is starting and it's time for you to bring it. Pit your knowledge against friends and fans everywhere in Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. It's free and it starts by signing up. Then pick your five angler team for each event. Grand prize winner gets a Bass Pro Shop shopping spree, cash and Rapala prize pack. Plus new opportunities including $4,000 worth of prizes for each individual event winner. Plus another 500 bucks if you're a Bass member. Total value for the season is $90,000. Sign up today and start bringing it at BassmasterFantasy.com. For over 70 years and 19 consecutive NMMA Consumer Satisfaction Awards, Skeeter continues to set the standard. And now, through October 19th, you can fall into savings with rebates of up to $1,500 on the FXR Limited, up to $2,500 on the FXR Apex, and double rebates of up to $3,000 on the ZX250. Fall into savings now through October 19th. Visit your local dealer or SkeeterBoats.com and fall into savings on the Skeeter boat of your dreams.
This reel allows you to cover more water, make more casts, giving you more opportunities to catch more fish. The new Revo Rocket, Abu Garcia for life. You're watching the Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain, being brought to you live by Skeeter Boats. Bassmaster Live on Championship Sunday. It's four days of fishing here on Lake Champlain in this regular season. Stop the fourth of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. First three days, we got to see the blue skies, the perfect sort of room temperature, 72 degrees. Absolutely Chamber of Commerce style weather. Oh, it was. Today we see a different side of Lake Champlain and these anglers, the best in the world. Well, that's what we ask them, be able to fish through all the changes, all the conditions that may completely sort of turn your world upside down, cause you to formulate a new game plan. And the one who can do it best of all, the one who catches the most. Biggest poundage through four days, four, five fish limits is the one who's gonna hold the trophy at the end of the day. That's what we're figuring out. As we go along, Time left on the clock today. The conditions are not going to get better. It is not a blue sky day today. It is not warm vacation type weather, but boy, it's it's Lake Champlain. It's one of the many faces of Lake Champlain. Seth Fighter said he really felt there was a 20 pound bag on this Rouse's Point flat. Up again. Looks like he's reconnected with him. I don't know how big he is yet. It's a bass, I know that. Feels good. Right there, oh, about no, 13 no, no, no. feet of water, scattered grass, a little bit of rubble and sand. Really, those three combinations on that giant flat. I don't even know if he's that big. I think it's just a mean one. Might call anyways. Trying to get rid of a two pound, 12 ounce. Two 12. This is small, and then you got a three, and a three and a quarter. You got him hooked a little funny, that's why he's fighting so hard. Come here, no, 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 no. Come here, come here. Come here. God dang it. Got him, yeah. Not big calls, but first call. That ain't a bad one. It's important to do that. Three something. We're calling now, boys. Let's see what we got.
three pounder, maybe. Corey's got three fish, not real big, less than six pounds. It's interesting to hear something from Bassmaster.com. Steve Bowman got to talk to him last night, and he feels it's going to come down really. This is a big bass tournament, and and what he meant by that is he felt whoever's in that top five that catches a five or better would win today. Haven't seen one of those yet. No. Fighters got the four and a half as our largest today. Brock Moldsley's out of range, but he's got two fish for 512. Come on. Definitely, if you saved your best day for last for today, you're going to stand a good chance of getting to hold that trophy at the end of it all. Another decent one. It's four. Fourth keeper there for Corey. Some ground to make up. He's uh, almost 13 pounds behind our leader right now. Toby Krieger. Having his best tournament in a while. Today. Long while. Yes. yes. Talked about that throughout this event. God, I want him to catch a double. It's not often that you do that. So he had two four-pounders in his hand on Championship Sunday. I would just like love to have seen him land both of them. I think we're still going to see a hot mess when... Whoa! Whoa. Oh, we have not seen one of those in years! Oh, oh, yeah. Holy cow, a wind sock. Remember back in the day? Used to use those all the time on, on these lakes. I thought it was Champy's dunce cap for a second wow. there. Oh, boy. How about that? And Krieger might live in Florida. Everybody knows him as a guy down on Okeechobee now, but like you said, Zone, he's from Indiana. He grew up yeah. fishing northern stuff until we he decided to move. Years and years of regional Ooh. tournaments when we were in our Ooh. late teens and early 20s. Kobe's seen a lot of rough water. So partial this jerk bait because I didn't bit it so well. Starting to crank in the inland sea. Mm -hmm. There we go. Not a giant, but. And Brandon Polinick drop shot in the zone. Finesse slammer. We can find out, though. He has a 212 as well in his uh, fast track. Small. Go on this side. Or do you want to go on this side? You can go on this side. That's okay. Go ahead. You know, it's something that, listening to David Mullins a while ago, you are not nice. as accurate. Wow, he is GoProing himself easy. while fighting a fish on Jay. There you go. Sunday. I like that. That's, see how easy it, everybody makes it after these such difficult tests? Um, they're not going to be as these, deadly like accurate with their electronics. The big ones. I'm about to take a wave right in the face, aren't I? Oh my gosh! Oh! Uh -oh. Got to be kidding me. Got to be kidding me. First one I've lost like that all week. That hurts. That hurts. God dang. Bummer. We about had him. Pretty good it's one too. 
What can you say? Just... To deal with. Hmm. Final day and all. And get knocked around pretty good. Keeps getting a little bit stronger every hour. All righty. Slight misfortune losing that last one, but it's good. They're still around. Like I'm just able to move around and I'd find one. There's just there's so many different kinds of fish down there. It's pike and walleye and drum, and sunfish, perch, owl wives. Corey Johnston hooked up. Corey Johnston, another angler concentrating on that New York side, just north of our takeoff in Plattsburgh. Fest this week. It really has. Terrific to watch. I mean, always somebody hooked up, it seems like. One of the cool dynamics on Champlain. Yes. What do you think they're eating? A little cross. Compared to a lot of the other smallmouth bodies of water we go, you go to St. Clair, you go to Lake Ontario, it's, it, it, it is a drop shot fest. I mean, that is the main gig, but but here what's really cool that you get to see a, a little bit more, you know, on Lake, uh, on Mill Lax when we go there, you can you can aggressively fish for these, you know, you can spinner bait, uh, Clark Wendland uh, had a great spinner bait bite in practice, but uh, you can rough talk them a lot more here, you can mm. top water fish, jerk bait, spinner bait to where it's not a 90% drop shot turn, as we look at two guys. It have to be super finesse. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Come on. Bait thieves. There's a good one right there, too. I don't usually just stick around and sit down there long either, though. Very quiet today. Yeah, he is. He is all business. Yeah, it was interesting to see Ron Moore and I. We were talking about it myself. Uh, his pictures on days one, two, and three with Mercer on stage. Very happy days one and two. Yeah, not so much day three picture. Not, no, not the second half of day two or second. He he looks like a a, a defensive line coach. <laughs> that's that's he really does if you look at him he looks like a defensive line coach that's looking to tune you up yeah he's been let down by you yeah. correct yeah those boat wakes smashing into us so what we're gonna do though i want to get 17 18 out here Grind it out, and then with this wind, I think I might be able to go get a big fly bait bite somewhere. Wider? 
That's mm. what I'm, I don't know. That's what I'm hoping for. Get 17 or 18, go catch a six or a couple of them. You can hear the game plan. He's going to swing. He's going to swing for the trophy with that game plan. <laughs> to get rid of a 212 and a three and he's he'll be there could do that in the next 30 minutes or 10 minutes Stay down. Stay down. Oh my gosh. That is the right kind right there. Whew. Brings me back to my wrestling days. <laughs> come on, come on. Get in the boat. Gosh, they're so strong. Especially when you got this much current from the wind. Where are you going? Where are you going? does not want to get any closer to this boat. Come on. Come on. Taking a look at Lappin's Bay in the background, other side of that island. Surely that one's gonna help some. Surely that one's gonna help some. There's the smallest one. Yeah, he's bigger than that one. We can check him, but put you on this side for now. I know you're bigger. Thank you, buddy. Look for that 212 in his live well right now so he can. Put that one back. And Uncle Bob. Have, have Uncle himself Bob, an upgrade you're a there. Skinny, I don't know. We're gonna have to check those two. I'm gonna need to get under you, Mr. Jake. Well, like we say, you and Ronnie pointed out, we got a great crew of smallmouth anglers in our top ten out there today. Great anglers all the way around. Some of them uh, on their second cut in a row, second final championship day in a row. It's a it's a it's a great battle so far. And, who knows what's coming up next? I really think the cool thing was actually listening to what Polinick said before that fish catch that he'll put a glide bait on and try to take one knockout punch and catch one of the. He caught a big one on it at the end of the day yesterday to get around that 20 pounds. But that is what separates guys that cash checks 
from guys that actually hold trophies. Yeah, absolutely. And we turn now to Ronnie Moore and the screen of knowledge. You, you, you pointed out these, the talent that's out there. Who are the talents who are recognized the most to start with versus who's in there now? Well, I wanted to, I wanted to bring it in for Rappel at Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing and show that. Shed some light on some of the stats and the differences from day one, day two, day three. And then, like you mentioned, those guys who have really mm. made the New York swing their own. And you think that some of these stats might be uh, messed up. Three pounds, five ounces for the average fish both days. That is spot on. Within a slight hundredth of a percentage, it's, it is incredible. Big bass, ounces off each day. The big bag, just one ounce difference. The cut weight didn't change much. This place is very dynamic. Like we said, maybe the closest first place to tenth place margin we've ever had in a Bassmaster Elite Series event. Two pounds, 12 ounces is is the difference we see over on day three with half the field fishing the average fish did not change at all spot on to what it's been big bass went down slightly with Shane Lee Hugh catching a 5-5 we noticed that Jamie Hartman Seth fighter the guys looking for one big bite in the end of that didn't get it yesterday and they slid back to the field a little bit and we see the cut lines and what the what the 20 pound bags look like there. not much of a drop off when we look at the what, what I would call the New York Naturals, the four guys that made the top ten at the St. Lawrence and Champlain, when it comes to fantasy fishing, Brandon Polinick uh, selected by 22% of the folks here. Obviously a high pick at the St. Lawrence, great pick there. Corey Johnston, 18% here after being a high pick there. Those two picks, fantastic back-to-back -back weeks. Brock Mosley and Taco Edu, guys that you might not expect to do well. Brock goes and gets a third-place finish at the St. Lawrence, basically weighing 18 largemouth and catching two smallmouth on a smallmouth fishery. Then he comes here to Champlain, Tommy, and he's weighed in 14 smallmouth mm. and one largemouth over three days here. Completely flipped it around. It is impressive to see Brock's New York swing. He did it great in 2017 as well. And Taco Edu, a guy who loves deep water fishing, he is making the most of these two events and so for Rappel of Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing Brock Mosley was a steal at 3% Taku Edu I don't think he's going to be 1% going forward for much longer people are going to learn about this guy especially St. Clair especially St. Clair yes get back out on the water thank you Ronnie good stuff right there both with the stats and, and the fantasy sorcerer fantasy dimension yes yes sir wizard got all the all the information at his fingertips back out to Seth Fighter our leader been on this flat a lot longer today than he was days one through three. He was largemouth fishing long before this. Got some great right. feedback early on today and got real fired up about this place. Understandable, he's gonna give it a fair trial all morning long. You think he tend to stay Z because it's about 20 miles from uh, uh -oh. his largemouth area? Oh, he caught my, oh, he jumped, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is getting intense. Freaking jumping eight feet out of the water, trying to hit spot lock in the giant waves. He's decent, I don't know if he's gonna call. I thought he got off, he just jumped 10 feet towards me. It's a nice one. Borderline call. Oop. Oh, I was going to boat flip him. I don't know if he's going to help. He might. Little upgrade, set fighter, Brandon Polinick. Polinick, he's looking for a 212 to get rid of right now. He may do it with this one. I don't think he's gonna help. Talked about it earlier in the van. A lot of these guys that are cranking. It's snapping in here, though. Seth, David Mullins, fishing a lot of crankbaits that are nowhere near the bottom. Mm -hmm. Nowhere, they are not. They're not grinding rock or, or ripping grass on the bottom. It's more of a feeding up, speed reeling gig. To where those smallies look up and see that bait compared to your traditional cranking down south that we see. Actually, Seth's looking for something to beat a three egg right now. He's, oh, Seth. he's gotten rid of that 212. No, nope, I'm not going to do it with this not one. Gonna do it. Not going to do it. Palinick's call was a little more than a half a pound. He's was one, okay. one pound, one ounce behind fighter right now. Good. Well, 
show you our big bass for the week. Not surprisingly, to see a couple of large mouths filling in that category right there. Six six, yeah. Shane with you, and actually, Shane, Shane with you talking yesterday. He found a mother load. Like, he ripped them yesterday. He was 15 pounds, 5 ounces on day one, well below the top 40 cut, and jumped up and finished 18th in this event. Best in the business, fighting the wind and waves out there. This is great stuff on the final day championship Sunday. Seth Fighter fighting one, so it's getting pretty intense out there with those conditions. And these guys are just bearing down that much harder. That's what makes for a great day, and we're right in the middle of it. The Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain is being brought to you live by Skeeter Boats. Wherever the trail gets rough and the mud gets deep, you'll find a Toyota Tacoma. It's the best-selling compact pickup in America for 12 years. And it's not because we baby them. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. truck have in common. Nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. If you love bass fishing, <laughs> then show your support by joining BASS today. With your membership, you'll receive every issue of Bassmaster Magazine, plus $50 in free gear, including a membership tackle bag, BASS cap, plus more. Click now on this video to join today. For over 70 years and 19 consecutive NMMA Consumer Satisfaction Awards, Skeeter continues to set the standard. And now, through October 19th, you can fall into savings with rebates of up to $1,500 on the FXR Limited, up to $2,500 on the FXR Apex, and double rebates of up to $3,000 on the ZX250. Fall into savings now through October 19th. Visit your local dealer or SkeeterBoats.com and fall into savings on the Skeeter boat of your dreams. names yet but you will It's been said that a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at work. Getting you to that fishing spot is key. And Bully Dog gets your truck road ready. No matter where, we give you the horsepower and towing torque right when you need it. We make getting there better. Make your ride a Bully Dog. Your time on the water is precious. 
He returns season after season to make unforgettable memories, fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. The Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain is brought to you by Humminbird, Mercury, Minn Kota, and by Talon. Very, very interesting day going on here, Championship Sunday. Well, let's sort of reset it for you in just a second here. Just know that today, our morning session, will take you up for another hour and a half, and then we'll knock off for an hour and a half. The cameras keep rolling, and we come back at noon, straight up noon Eastern time on ESPN2. Right now, we're on the app. We're on Bassmaster.com, of course, and Bassmaster.com, also where you find the way in today, 3 p.m. Eastern time. This is the big one. This is where it all gets decided. <laughs> okay. So. Mark down, 3 Eastern, weigh in, Fastmaster.com. Nailed it, my friend. By Thank the way, you. big congrats to you. What? Calling the Brunson fight, beating Edmund Shabazian yeah, well, last know. night. TKO, Shabazian's a joke. Yes. He's a joke. <laughs> Undefeated means you, you haven't been defeated yet. I you think I nailed was it. pretty unambiguous about that yesterday. Yeah. Back out to Jamie Hartman live. I mean, you being an avid MMA fan, that's got to crush, crush your soul being wrong last night. I, it wasn't wrong. I was way off mm. in that match. The golden boy, Edmund Shabazian, with a joke. <laughs> You'll be back. Yeah, the untruth. <laughs> slower going for Jamie Hartman this morning. We knew that these clouds and this wind was going to definitely affect our anglers. It's all wrapped up. Stay just like that. Oh, no. Come here. That one choked it. Should not be bad though. All right. Jamie Hartman put one in. You can probably get something out of that for sure. Also standing by right and right uh, just outside of our camera shot, as a matter of fact, is our own Davey Hyde. First yes. chance of the morning to visit with Davey. And no. watching, watching Jamie out there, as, as, as Mark Zona pointed out, Davey, a little slower for Jamie this morning. Paul and Nick Fighter, the ones who got off to the big start. With everything different, everything kind of changed up today. How important is it to, to put that much uh, distance between you and the fellow who was in first place? And can Jamie catch up to these guys? Well, as you guys know, uh, I've been with Jamie the last two mornings, and yesterday was a little slower than the day before, and I just had a feeling that he had really caught most of those fish uh, that were catchable off of that point that he was he was fishing. So I chose to go with Jason Williamson, uh, I guess in about ninth place coming in today, but this is the tightest top 10 I can remember. So I go with Jay Will, just had a hunch, and uh, and he's got five really nice fish. Uh, I called four of them three and a half pounders, and then he, his fifth fish was a solid four, maybe four and a quarter. Um, 
So he's he's in the hunt. He, he's drop shotting off a shoal on the uh, inland sea, the Vermont side on on a shoal, just just scrapping around looking for fish. And, and a lot of these guys have, have talked about they feel like they're kind of running out of fish or, or they're seeing fish and they can't get a bite. But Jason said that he's seeing literally, and this was his words, thousands of smallmouth on that shoal. Uh, you just have to to pick the right ones to drop on the right time. But here's something that, that really got my attention. He said the second day of the tournament, he did not have a fish at 12 o'clock. Caught all his weight between 12 and two. He said one o'clock has been the time for him every single day. And my question to him was, are you gonna be able to stay on this shoal at one o'clock today? Because when I went over across the inland sea this morning, it was it was a little bumpy, but it's it's a lot bumpy right now. I can promise you, it's going to be very interesting how these guys try to calculate their run back. Um, you don't want to be late because a pound will cost somebody to determine. If you're one minute late, you get a pound penalty. So it'll be very interesting if he tries to stay and some of these other guys try to stay and how long they allow themselves to get back this afternoon. Davy Height, um, I know you hate this. I I, I do. But we're going to do it. Looking at as tight as this event is, uh, you you are a wizard at this. Call the champion. One uh, name. The tightest championship Sunday I've ever seen, and you're going to make me call one. I'm sticking with the fighter. I, I just have to. I picked him before the tournament. I, I called him on, on day two. I'm still calling the fighter. Uh, it'd be hard to bet against him. He's got the small mouth, large mouth gig going, which I thought would take a combination to win this event this week. Uh, it looks like he's bearing down on the small mouth a little more today. So fighter's my pick. Mm -hmm. Well, Davey, I'm sorry. I thought you were with Jamie, and I, I miss. I heard uh, Jamie and Stu, Jason. I got it mixed up in my mind there. But you, you're talking about getting around and how much harder that's going to be throughout the course of this afternoon. Are you making a plan, if you're out there among those guys so tightly bunched, are you making a plan to sort of wind up in a spot that is closer to home, in a spot that you're likely to not get, not get hung up, hung out to dry out there, or hung out to get wet, I should say? No, you yeah, you're exactly right, Tommy. I mean, we have to kind of try to calculate our day tr covering this event also. And with it so tight, I mean, 10th place uh, or the leader this morning, Jamie Harmon, anybody could win this thing because – and. It, I felt that way without the weather, but with this weather, it's going to really be interesting this afternoon. I think it'll affect some people's fish. They, they won't bite as well. I think you might have somebody try to stay in an area a little too long and not realize how rough that inland sea has gotten or the, the main lake over on the New York side. Uh, so it's going to be very, very interesting, but I am going to be closer and closer back to the takeoff and check-in area as the day progresses. Thank you, Davey. That sounds like a really good plan. Davey Hyde out there. Uh, given valuable info on Jason Williamson, we hadn't had a camera on him. Uh, and his bass this track is not updating. He should be in third place. He's got about 18 wow. pounds. Well, he should only be two behind Seth Fighter. Definitely a part of the story. Boy, what a great story we have today. Again, we started with these anglers so close together. The top four within 12 ounces. The whole field in this top 10 we're fishing today. Now four. Well, two and a half pounds separating. And we've had some sketch service on the Inland Sea. Brock Mosley at Lochran. Yeah, we've not seen much of him a all week. Ride with four guys in a boat. If Corey's got a giant bag, I might just stuff a bunch on the way in, just get them all wet. You can hide behind me, EK. Okay? Yep. We'll make Corey sit right there with his back to the bow and just... <laughs> Sorry, bud! But we are. I wouldn't do that to somebody I wasn't friends with. That's what he gets for beating me. It'll be interesting to see how long Brandon Polinick... This little Carolina rig deal kind of slowed down pushes this deep water in the plug. inland sea today. Talked about getting a couple of good upgrades and heading, He's on heading off and swim taking the glide bait in, in, yeah. in, into play there. Big so. swim baits. Yeah. Polonek's girlfriend, Tiffany, made the comment he tied on a bunch of those last night. And it made her nervous because that is a high risk deal. Oh, yeah. You're not going to, you know, you're, you're going to forego a lot of bites or a lot of small culls trying to get one knockout punch with a, with a big glide bait. But that makes 
Carl Jacobson happy <laughs> if in case he's watching today. Then again, I would have every single possible bait that I think I could possibly catch a fish on a Champlain on the final day rigged up the night before, given the wind. There's no point in trying to hold in rollers, five, six foot waves possibly, right, to rig up. tie at 1 p.m. tying a FG knot. Mm. I like how Kobe Krieger at our pre-show said, I was pretty happy till I just looked at the weather. I would think he'd be looking at it all night. Well, they, you know, he's got a point. There's nothing you can do to change it, whether you look at it or not. I've tried so hard to change the weather before, and just zero results. Real interesting final day, like all our anglers said. Man, it's it's set up for a shootout. There is no they were doubt. so close together. You have your best day today, best day of the tournament today. You win. Do we see Seth go to the bottom of the inland sea and largemouth fish today? Wow. I, think I hope so. I think he'll go to a different marina we haven't maybe seen. It'll be very. I, I think I think the gut will come into play today. The cut through between New York and Vermont. I really, I, they get caught in there, man. We spent a lot of time seeing them get caught yesterday. Well, Seth's played it letter perfect so far today, and you, you would think that would be his eventual so fishing place. Zona, my mother in law actually wondered what you meant and why people don't fish the gut all day. If you, tens of thousands of bass have been caught there, what's the deal with Hartman only rolling up and fishing that one little thing? Why has more of the gut not been explored? Uh, and it, for someone who doesn't know, uh, you know, necessarily I, I a bunch think, about bass fish, I think outside of the gut, there's more three and three quarter pound fish. But I think around the gut, you have that potential of that straggler four and a half to five pounder. I mean, there's been I've been in events here where there's been six pound largemouth caught out of the gut, but you also forego that. 18 pound stringer a, a, a lot So if of you already have it, that's yes. why you yes. go is for yes. that one bite, yes. which is what we've seen Hartman do, yes. catch two fish, maybe tops there. Yes. And yesterday he broke the one off that he thought would cull. Not as much uh, pleasure boat traffic on the lake today as we got to see. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's a that observation. It was a time out there yesterday. Oh my gosh. I honestly can't remember a final day hardly at Champlain. Nine times out of ten on the final day, it's, it's a rainy, windy final day. I literally have nightmares about 2016 opening. Well, in 2017, we had a canceled day, yep. first day. After the greatest comeback in elite history. Yes, yes. 19th place. I don't think we'll ever, well, we did it this year at the St. John's Road. And what Aaron, what Aaron did that last day in that tournament, Aaron Martins, that bag is out here today with these conditions. It is out there. Wasn't that crazy? Corey all, Johnson left. All four of those cameras locked up at the same time. It's And it's been, it's been a bit of a grind for me this morning. Uh, lost one good one on a jerk bait, probably close to four pounds. Um, got two okay ones in the live well and, and three little ones that we need to get rid of with, uh, with some big ones. So we're just kind of running around here and seeing if we can't find another little group of them. Once I get one on a jerk bait, then I'll slow down and fish the area a little better. Seems like if they're there, they'll bite. Well, it's definitely a little slower for me the last few days. Um, in the morning, I've been able to, to get a few nice ones, so keep grinding away.
real, real big time buzzkill today. The weather we have going on here on Champlain, it's going to definitely damper Champy Festival going on south of where Corey well, Johnston is. Yeah, that's is. the downside. Of, that is the a bad side big of bad weather. Downside. It's got it's got Such completely spun, I, spun out. He is heartbroken. I know. So much so that he, he couldn't even eat this morning. He literally made breakfast and then left it at home because he couldn't right. he couldn't eat right. and stomach that. They were really looking forward to a monster Sunday too. Oh, I, know, hey, I, I got wow. another See monster I, story yeah. from nearby, Northfield, Vermont. The pig man of Northfield. What? What? Man, Wait, in the 70s, there's sightings of a uh, half man, half pig guy who scared some teens going to a dance, <laughs> drinking in a sand pit. <laughs> oh, the half man. Who, half this is, who it hasn't? <laughs> Look. I think I've seen that movie before. And Such then there was rumors there was a missing boy who grew to haunt the woods and he was wearing a hollowed out pig head on his. Ooh. As a hat or whatever. That does smell great. All mm. kinds of rumory so stuff. You know, there's Sasquatch it, sightings up there. Is there an image of, of Pigman? Well, drawings. I'd like to see them. I can send it on to the producers. <laughs> okay. We should get Such at the screen of knowledge. Of course, you know what Northfield, Vermont is famous for. I don't. It's the sock capital of the world. They make socks there. Didn't know it. Gosh. I didn't either. I don't. My life has changed knowing Socks it now. Socks and pig man. Back We're heading to Northfield. Sort of a specialty destination. <laughs> what did he say? Six <laughs> Drinking Drink. in a sand pit, <laughs> scaring teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, that part I can believe. Owen supposedly took a guy, and they searched the area, of caves, and they found some bones with no heat mm. and cloven. Footprints and you know hoof footprints Bones just, with yeah. no heat. Well, well they, 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 that, they, they assumed he was eating pe things raw. Oh, wow! Oh. The pig man of Northfield. Such, I've never seen you and the pig man in the same place. What, what are Watch the possibilities it. that you are scaring uh, teens in the same ominous place. skies out there in the southwest yeah, of said fighter? It's gonna get a little chippy here on Champlain. Brandon's fixing it. Get right into it too, rain yep. wise. He's been into it wind wise for a while. Waves here. Near, this was mentioned yesterday as well. Different looking from St. Lawrence. Those are more like giant swells at the St. Lawrence here. They're, here they're yeah. tight. One, right? The, bang, bang, bang. These like to beat you up. <laughs> they really do. I don't know how many guys we're going to be seeing fish with 15 minutes left to check in. They're yes. going to be already at the takeoff, or they're going to definitely be in route. The the open that I fished here in whatever 20 years ago, um, the last day it was like this in the morning, and I was running to the inland sea. And uh, Davy has a very similar similar story that happened to him on Lake Ontario. I'm going across, and my rub rail comes unattached and slaps me across the head. Dude, when you're, when you get blasted, okay? You get teeth by a rub rail. Oh. Hashtag not cool. No, 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 that's like a billy club. Corey Johnson hooked up. He's I remember oh, Davey, Hype. Davey Hype. That oh. was the reason he told me uh, the fisherman's shirts lost the collars years ago from slapping on the runs. Pike. Oh my God, Suge, you have people sending me DMs for Pigman now. Of pictures of Pigman? Of Pigman, yes. Can, is, can somebody to... send me one? Uh, <laughs> Get it out of your system. I remember the goat, the goat with Adam Sandler. That, 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 sorry. That's Jim Brewer, wasn't it, doing the goat? goat I know. I, SNL or it's, something no, else? No, it was the one with Adam Sandler. It's a goat that party. Oh, oh, oh.
No, I'm just trying to tick the top of the grass with it. Now listen, <laughs> listen, I, I can't tell everybody what I'm seeing right now in the studio, but I'm seeing pictures of Pigman, and, and here's the best thing I can tell you, it is horrifying if you're a child. And very, very, very inaccurate between the three photos. <laughs> it is. Horrifying if you're a child, and familiar if you're an adult. Exactly. Some mornings it's, you look in the mirror and... You see, take a look back at the season. We got a great uh, a Garmin winning ways to share with you right now. We started it off, as we say, what seems like three years ago down in Florida on the St. John's River, but actually it was in early March. Exactly right, the Garmin winning ways. Taking a look at Jake Whitaker right there, but the trophy was held by this man right here, Paul Mueller, and he's just kind of under the radar the whole turn. Not one of those tournaments. We talked about it this week. Really, not one of those tournaments you thought you'd see Paul Mueller win. Absolutely, everybody went to upstream places like Lake George and so forth, and Paul Mueller going downstream in the direction of Jacksonville found one, one little. I hidden out place there and got it done. Davey Hyde Great Dauntless. one at Lake Eufaula, though. That was our second one of the season. Took a long time to get here, and it was worth the wait. Big time tournament on Eufaula. Scott Canterbury consistent the entire event. Even had a big last day. Caught himself 19 pounds and just ended up getting beat by this guy right here. Lake Chickamauga, Tennessee native Buddy Gross with one of the best final days we've ever seen on the Bassmaster Elite Series. 27 pounds and 11 ounces by far. The big limit of the tournament at just the right time for this man fishing his first year. The rookie on the Bassmaster Elite Series. The rookie with a lot of experience. and Man, this is an experience he will never forget. That is for sure. You fall. Really showed out for us there. We been worth the wait. Just last week on the St. Lawrence River, there's that man again, Paul That's Mueller. Mm -hmm. right and that was one of those tournaments where <laughs> Davey Height yeah. said it. One of those tournaments you kind of really wanted to give two trophies out yeah. for the performance that we saw on Lake Ontario, especially the final day of this event. Chris Johnston, the one taking it for your Garmin winning ways. Holy. <laughs> mastered his plan all week, managing his spots to perfection, and we got to see how powerful Chris Johnston was out on a very, very nasty Lake Ontario. So much experience, so much uh, time on the water on this uh, special place, and he knew exactly how to orchestrate the win on the final day. First Canadian to ever hoist yes. one of our Bassmaster Elite Series trophies. Mercer's waiting for that big Canadian celebration. <laughs> That's huh? right. That's right. Much to the light. Energy up. Mercer. Hey, there's there's the rest of our schedule later this month. We're already in August. Third week in August, we go to Lake St. Clair. And I will tell you, if Buddy Gross gets through that mm -hmm. specific event, yeah, things really line up good for Buddy Gross because we're going to have some tournaments that you can do your gig. You can fish really, really shallow, matted grass, or offshore. He's going to be a little bit of a problem where other guys like Taku Ito that have said, man, I do not like being shallow. Some of those events it's a good crash course. Yeah, are going to be a crash course, yes. Yeah, we are going to get yeah. all sorts of new knowledge, new looks at familiar places, Gunnersville, Santee, Cooper, Chickamauga, and Lake Fork in the late, late summer, early spring, or early fall, it's going to be Tremendous. We look forward very much to that. Again, we're approaching the halfway point of our season here. So thankful to get our season in and have a plan to get it all finished. All eight regular season events. Seth Fighter, Brandon Polinick have distanced themselves from the rest of the pack a little bit. We got a lot more fishing to come right here on Bassmaster. Big man. No, no lie. Right. The Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain is being brought to you live by Skeeter Boats. I'm pro anger Andy Montgomery. I've been making my living with Strike King products for a long time. 
So when they showed me the new tour grave line, I was all in. I knew I could trust it. What I didn't know was how easy it was to use. With the spooling tool and the prepaid envelope to recycle your old line included in every single box, not only is it the best line on the market, it gives you the easiest fishing experience possible. Find out more at StrikeKing.com. While I travel the country on the Bassmaster Elite Series, I simply can't let the weather be the reason I don't win $100,000. That's why I use AFCO clothing to keep me warm, dry, and protected from whatever Mother Nature wants to throw at me. My season depends on it. My career depends on it. AFCO, any fish, any water. At Mercury, we invested thousands of hours of engineering manpower so you can enjoy hours and hours of untapped horsepower. Introducing the all-new V6 Mercury Pro XS. Light, quick, efficient. Mercury, go boldly. At Mercury, there are no limits to what we'll do to make sure you have no limits either. Introducing the all-new V8 Mercury Pro XS. Light, quick, efficient. Mercury, go boldly. their names yet but you will it's been said that a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at work getting you to that fishing spot is key and bully dog gets your truck road ready no matter where we give you the horsepower and towing torque right when you need it we make getting there better. Make your ride a bully dog. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z Series. Unleash next level performance. Mercury, go boldly. Introducing the Bash U TV app. Get the most out of your Bash U TV subscription and learn on the go with the Bash U TV app. Unlimited access to 700 plus training videos. Multiple new releases each week, including seminars, on-water videos, live shows, interviews, and other original content. The Bash U TV app. Never stop learning. In the wild, nature dictates that when it's time to eat, animals will instinctively find and devour the meal that satisfies them most. In the water, Berkeley Powerbait's scientifically proven formula triggers the natural predatory instinct in bass. Now available in a plethora of shapes, sizes, and colors. Berkeley Powerbait. Fish bite and won't let go. You're watching the Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain, being brought to you live by Skeeter Boats. Just a regular old shootout. That's what it's come down to today. It does not look anything like that picture right there of Lake Champlain. 
That's a beauty shot from Lake Champlain, and there are plenty of them on both sides. Got the Anirodacks on the New York side, Green Mountains of Vermont, one of America's very first vacation destinations for sure. But occasionally, the lake will take some back from you, and it's uh, weather-wise giving us a different look altogether today. Seth Fighter started in fourth place, but just 12 ounces back of our leader right there, Jamie Hartman. Mm -hmm. He has now taken over that lead and has occupied that spot pretty much all morning long. But here's his closest pursuer. Within a pound almost, Brandon Pollock. Starting to grow in the Inland Sea right outside of St. Albans and Lappins Bay. Come on, eat it. Eat it. He went down to it. He's staring right at it. Come on. Come on. Get it, get it, get it. You got it. Come on. Stay on there. It feels like a good one. Woo! Woo! Come on. Come on. Stay on there. Wow, it is starting Stay to grow. There. Mm. Stay on there. Feels like a good one. God, I'm so nervous. <laughs> Shouldn't be, but I am. Come on. God. close. Now you're getting close. Stay on there. Stay on there. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Oh, come on. Come on. Yeah, it's definitely a small mouth. I just can't tell how big it is yet, but it looks short, but yes. Please give us the chance to Cole if he does. They're all twins for, for sure, Brandon Polinick. He's just not as long. Probably need to get under your knee, I'm guessing. Set fighter hooked up. I think this is a three for Polinick. I think he's bigger than that one. Oh, he's got a good bag. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Good, got a real good bag. A really good bag. And I think he's got a really good largemouth in there, too. And I think that's his smallest one, is the largemouth. Stay on, baby. Come back, come back. It's a bass. I'm not sure how big he is. Feels good, man. Fighter with a couple of three good, pounders dude. as well, his smallest. Critical fish. We talked about it. You are playing with fire when you're cranking here. That ain't that big. David Mullins for the first time in a little bit. David Mullins having a great tournament. Well, I, I just can't 
I can't hold out there where I've been catching them offshore. Uh, it's just too much wind for me, and I can't see what I need to see. So I caught one good one out there, and you know, I'm, I'm. This is a day to throw a crankbait. This is a day to you know to move, throw some moving baits, and I'm hoping. Uh, Hoping I, you know, come up here in the shallow end where I caught them the first two days and never got a bite up here yesterday. And we're going to see if this wind's got them, you know, active, some bait pushing around and on this flat. So we're going to ride the crankbait for a little while and see what happens. But, you know, the only place I got bit offshore was someplace protected and there's just not much of it out there. So we're back up here winding and Hopefully we run into I just had a bite. I'm not sure what it was. It might have been a walleye, but uh, that's all I know to do right now. I mean, I'm kind of handcuffed because I, I can't stay out there and and fish it efficiently like I need to. So and one when and, and the, other, the other part back of my mind goes, well, it might be a blessing because if I come up here, I might be able to whack them if it's a you know if they're biting this. So we got to check it and. We'll run it for an hour or two and see what we got, and then if we need to, we'll we'll go back out and try to fish in protected areas. Seth's still up here, so apparently there's some biting here. Big contrast versus yesterday for David Mullins. Had a great, great day and started out second place, a single ounce behind the lead. Colby Krieger, Seth Fighter, Corey Johnston, David Mullins, all fishing that north flat south of Rouse's Point. I can hear it. Did it literally just go right down in that hole? <laughs> huh. Yeah. I think it literally just rolled right down into my console. <laughs> now your boat's gonna rattle. <laughs> I'll find that in the next couple weeks that we have off. I do, I think it slid right down in that hole. Much more protected where Jamie Hartman is than a lot Boy, of our other anglers. It's like a different, different country. Nice and chilling out a little bit. Thought it was supposed to just be nasty once it started. I can deal with this. Problem is, I think everybody else is catching them. <laughs> so they're probably just chomping today. been a perch and not many perch bites in there today like there has been even earlier we're getting more perch bites yeah we've been I actually have just been staying in the same area and I, I told myself um, today that I just didn't want to panic. I didn't want to rush myself. I woke up this morning and saying, just take your time. You know where the right ones live. And the biggest key is with the weather change is that I knew these fish were gonna be moving and changing. And so once I got around a group of fish, I wanted to just kind of settle in and try to be as efficient as possible. Cause in this wind, you just can't move as much you're just wasting a lot more time I'm trying to be smart be efficient move around when we need to but as long as i'm still able to uh kind of move around on the trolling motor you can see it's starting to calm down actually a little bit it's like we get a bunch of wind the storm blows through and that kind of calms down a little bit on the back side but as long as i can move around still see my 360 efficiently and and be able to catch these fish i'm all about it it's like gonna come off spot like we can get one
A lot of grass up here, though. I gotta be careful. The last one got me wrapped up in some. I don't think he's that big. I've been wrong both ways, though. He's got one chasing him, I can't tell. He ain't that big. No, I think it was just like grass on my line. See all those red lines were his track lines of that key little area on that north flat, and that's really what the bottom looks like there. Not a not a lot of irregularities. Thick old guy. Keep catching them. One of them's gonna be big. That's kind of the deal with the smallies. Play the numbers game. So far, you give the morning to set fighters. You got the best limit of all of our 10 today. <gasps> Do you think he does? Really? Polonic? You think Polonic's got more? I think Polonic's got a little bit more. Okay. Just, just, just from the looking ones that at we've him. seen. Yeah, okay. He's Polonic. caught bigger numbers, that's for sure. Feels so calm and peaceful out here. Four now. and a half pounder, though, that Seth caught really in the first hours. A little bit of the equalizer. It bridges the gap, gives them a little bit more time today to hunt for some bigger ones. <laughs> it's just slick where Jamie Hartman is. That is so weird. You don't want to play the armchair quarterback hindsight game, but fighter 6'6 six, six on day two and goes practicing after that. That 6'6 six, six would have allowed him to maybe have a 23 pound bag or. You're a, right. You know, had he not if, you, if you yeah. push him a little bit, and if he knew yesterday he would only get seven, he would easily get 17 and a half and couldn't upgrade from there. I think he does push him on day two, but you don't know that in this sport. But man, no. that six and a half is a fish and a half, and that you need to take advantage of it when you get one of those bites in a day. It has he, to be your biggest bag of the week. He said on day two after the weigh in when we talked. That he shook, a, you know, he, he he went practicing and shook a lot of fish in milfoil off on day two later in the day and felt one of them was really big and then made the comment, he's like, what what was I thinking shaking those off? Because he never, he's never reconnect. Yesterday he made the comment, he said, somebody must have fished through one of the areas that I saved because I got zero bites yesterday yeah. in something that he was saving. He said someone didn't help him out yesterday. Right. Yeah. That and Saturday, fishermen that are not in the tournament, recreational right. traffic, waves, anything can slightly take those bites and, from one day and, and turn them into just not wanting to bite the next. Then his third area was actually in St. Albans where we saw Schmidt yep. shred them on day one. I honestly think that if Brian Schmidt's watching, he'll probably agree to this. I don't know if Brian Schmidt's ever caught 14 pounds at, the Cham at Lake Champlain. And yesterday he had wow. 14 and fell to the mid-20s. Wow. Let's see what they're in here. Oh, if that sun comes out, my leader, man. I don't know. I don't know what the heck the weather's gonna do. It ain't doing what it said it was gonna do anyway. So a little bit of rain, but it's slick, slick as could be right now. That is so strange. Yeah. If only he knew. 
But it's definitely, you heard Polinick say it, it, since that one cell moved through, it's calmed down in a big, big way from where it was an hour ago. Oh, really? You got knife now. This is like perfect. So I'm make a quick little run up this ridge and see if I see any. And then probably go hit another spot. We're slid out here a little bit deeper. We caught most of them up there. A little bit shallower, like 20 to 22 ish this morning. And then I, I slid out here a little deeper. It's been some really good ones out on this break from like 30 to 35. I've caught them this week all the way out to 42. Now I think there's fish deeper than that. We're just gonna make a kind of a lap up this thing, see if I see any, and then probably make a little move, fish another area. These fish just run in little groups, so you can find a group like we were on a group of them today, and you move around and kind of pick them off here and there, and then you gotta move and get into another group. You know, that, that group will either move on or they just disperse too much. Like, I still have water that we could fish today that I have not touched in the last three days. <laughs> so I, I kind of want to see what some of that might look like. Starting to hear the game plan for the rest of the day. Yeah. Especially from Brandon. It's one of the things that's great about fishing in the inland sea over Brandon Polinick's right shoulder is really the, the basin yeah, of the inland want. sea that kind of feeds and reloads a lot of these deep areas that we got to watch him and Micah Frazier fishing. What's that one do? I might come all the way up to like three foot of water. It's been a ball of bait or something. Getting a really good look of how clouds affect shallow or smallmouth today. A very, very good look at it. Smallmouth's here probably saying, my, I can't wait. Because I've got to quit throwing that stupid jerkbait over top of my head all day long. Nice now. Oh boy, I 
guys at a time with that jerk bait too down in your bottom left hand corner if you're just too oh in. there he is oh that's a big one good this. golly one of the finer catches in the history not of a big one he really smoked serious. it absolutely smoked it so ominously hold on mm, now he smoked hold it. on pretty good one dude there's like three with him I got two. I got two. I had two. I got two. I got two. I got two. I got two. I got. Oh! I lost the one. I lost the one. Dang! Damn it! Dang it! I had two. I had them both in my arms. Dang it! Dang it! Oh, no, Lord, dang it, dude, I had two on, I had two, I had both in my arms and the one got off, dang it. Oh, so great. It really is. Bringing the volume, bringing the, bringing the, it, the panic out there, that was fantastic. <laughs> it is, it is something else. Kobe Krieger, the veteran. <laughs> it is, that whole thing is such a hot mess. Uh, it really is. Back out to Jamie Hartman live. a big fish. Rod Bates' little creeper in the throat. Yes. Reaction bite, too. Hit it on the drop. There's one on the rock, bro. <laughs> There's one on the rocks. That's five. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Was a critical bass. Boy, that's going to come oh, pretty close yeah. to oh, ridicule. Buddy pulls through Tying her back now. up. Let's take a look at that jig. It's oh. half a pound behind fighter right, right now. I'm going to sit and retie this. I'm going to weigh out what I got because I have no idea. We'd like know to what's know. What's small, yeah. what's not. It's okay. I'm drifting perfectly right back off of it. So. I can stop shaking still. We got three good ones. Three real good Wow, Jamie Hartman still sort of, as I see it, a little bit in recovery mode from yesterday. A little yesterday, bit. Yes. Yesterday was trying. He's just trying to get things all the equilibrium, all everything ginning up again. So watch out for our man who's trying to win this thing wire to wire. Native New Yorker, Jamie Hartman, 
going for his third victory on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Seth Fighter standing in his way, though. Good, good morning for Seth Fighter. Brandon Polnick, ditto. Great, great shootout going here. We got more to come on Bassmaster Live. The Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain is being brought to you live by Skeeter Boats. What do a taco and a taco truck have in common? Nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Mercury, go boldly. Over 70 years and 19 consecutive NMMA Consumer Satisfaction Awards, Skeeter continues to set the standard. And now, through October 19th, you can fall into savings with rebates of up to $1,500 on the FXR Limited, up to $2,500 on the FXR Apex, and double rebates of up to $3,000 on the ZX250. Fall into savings now through October 19th. Visit your local dealer or SkeeterBoats.com and fall into savings on the Skeeter boat of your dreams. This reel allows you to cover more water, make more casts, giving you more opportunities to catch more fish. The new Revo Rocket, Abu Garcia for life. Introducing the Bash U TV app. Get the most out of your BashU TV subscription and learn on the go with the BashU TV app. Unlimited access to 700 plus training videos. Multiple new releases each week, including seminars, on-water videos, live shows, interviews, and other original content. The BashU TV app, never stop learning. I'm pro anger Andy Montgomery. I've been making my living with Strike King products for a long time. So when they showed me the new Tour Grade line, I was all in. I knew I could trust it. What I didn't know was how easy it was to use. With the spooling tool and the prepaid envelope to recycle your old line included in every single box. Not only is it the best line on the market, it gives you the easiest fishing experience possible. Find out more at StrikeKing.com.
At Mercury, we invested thousands of hours of engineering manpower so you can enjoy hours and hours of untapped horsepower. Introducing the all-new V6 Mercury Pro XS. Light, quick, efficient. Mercury, go boldly. At Mercury, there are no limits to what we'll do to make sure you have no limits either. Introducing the all-new V8 Mercury Pro XS. Light, quick, efficient. Mercury, go boldly. their names yet but you will when I'm on the road for work or for fun I always like to have a reliable generator around this open frame inverter from champion is ideal because it's lighter than a standard open frame generator and more affordable than a traditional inverter the remote start helps me start up the generator or shut it off without having to leave my camper it provides essential power for things like charging my boat batteries. Also makes life a lot more comfortable for myself and my family. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories. Fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. Pre-collision system, standard. On the 2020 Tacoma, so you can go from one epic playground to the next. If you want to play, you need the Tacoma. The Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain is brought to you by Evo Garcia, Berkeley, Nitro Boats, and by Ranger Boats. Every regular season event, Bassmaster Elite Series is four days of fishing. Sometimes it changes each and every day of those four days here at Lake Champlain. And the first three days were just right, beautiful, sunny, flat, perfect, right down the middle. The big changes have come today. We started the day as, as a result of very stable days leading up to here, a field that was tightly bunched together, very tightly bunched together. Spread out very quickly as they started catching them this morning. And we're, we're not near as tight as they were when we started this day. Is that a on pig top. man statue there? Did no, you see? No, 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 no. I hope not, not we'll at all. back up to our North Flat right now. And actually, during the break, this happened with David Mullins. No one with him. Tell how good he's hooked. Oh, I just got one. Dag going. He just got one, Mike. Look at that. Just got one right in the back. Oh, come on. 
Come on, stay still. Just don't bend out. I got tired of this one out because I can't pull that line. Look at that, just barely in the back, bottom of the lid. Good plug by. Take a look at this graph too right there. Finally got us one. Water's good and cold. There was another one with that fish. That is four, right? Big one. What, 10 pounds, and this was just it's moments like later. Bass. If it is, it's big. This might be a big walleye. I can't tell what it is. Oh, it's a big bass. No! Oh, no. Mm. Uh. That one was close to five. Watch this, see what you think. Absolutely smoked it. Hard to see, but wow. I'll uh, take his word for it. Absolutely. I mean, I couldn't even turn it. How did it come off? He had to be hooked. Oh. Mm, tough one to bear right there for David Mullen. Started this day just an ounce out of the lead. Still waiting on his fifth fish here. As weird as this sounds, though, that north flat of Rouse's Point, as strange as this is, it's a lot like Lake St. Clair. It's featureless. Mm. It's at times very random. Uh, you know, a lot of it's really from 12 out to 16 feet of water. We see Mullins a little bit deeper than Seth and Corey Johnston fishing out there in that 14 to 15 foot range. But like St. Clair, a lot of that cabbage, when you find those little, little clumps of cabbage, that's where the smallies will actually relate to, suspend in. And just to repeat for everybody who's joining us now, you you don't crank it like you maybe crank at home. You're you're taking the top of that vegetation, yes, right? Yes, okay. you're you're probably about halfway to the bottom, maybe a little bit more. But a lot of those smallies that hit that come up at it. You are not grinding the bottom, which you typically are doing when you're cranking. So why wouldn't we see a guy throw a lipless then for fans that are already too, too like high, too high. These are almost like over here. It's like I need to throw a Stay down. Again. Stay down. Gosh, I'm mighty. Stay down. Looks like a this one. is a baby compared to one I just hooked. Oh, not as big. Can't tell how he's hooked, even that clear water. Get up in here. You see this one? 
And the one I just lost would eat this one. Oh, God. That's five, isn't it? One, two, three, three. Well, if you're just tuning in, he has lost a bunch of them this week. He has. It very, very consistent weights, right at 20 pounds. See that? None, none are belly up. Now looking good. Water's good and cold. It's just the way we want. Man, David Mullen's signal just locked up for us. Just a second there. We got Seth Fighter on camera, Kobe Krieger as well. Boy, weights this tight, that is a epically big fish loss. Yeah, David Mullins could be within a couple of pounds of the lead right now. Maybe if he landed that big one that came off. So I'll set catch quite a few on that drop shot. Day two. <laughs> Uh, make a few more gas with a crankbait, and then we are. I don't know what's going on right now. This current's like backwashing. My boat's wanting to go into the wind. There's one. Ooh. Uh -oh. Okay, don't put the crankbait down the rest of the day. Oh, boy, I lost some treble hooks there. I should've just boat flipped them. Stay on. He looked pretty good. He's probably gonna come off. I had both hooks in him, he did that, and I lost one. He was halfway in the boat, I should've just swung him in. Got my hook back. Long, skinny one. He's probably gonna call though. Went from two hooks to one hook to two hooks. I don't know if he'll call. He's long. Did you see how hard it bit that crankbait? Yes. I, like he said, I thought he was throwing a spinnerbait for a second there. I looked up with how hard he set the hook. Again, his smallest is a three, and Mullins, three pounder, got him within two pounds, six ounces of the lead. Wow. Well, He's got 14.3 on the day. They're all the same size. Let me hang on to them real quick and just. No, well, it ain't so windy. Let me weigh number three some more. Kobe going back to his topwater bait. It's calmed down uh -huh. so much out here. Had a bit of success with that yesterday, early. Not as much as he wanted. Well, he had some treble, pro treble hook problems with that. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Throw this thing, they won't bite it, probably. Oh, the spook, they bite it, but they don't eat it. Super familiar with topwater smallmouth, but when I was in Michigan just a few weeks ago, post spawn, the amount that would miss a walking topwater like a spook, but would land, you know, would get Fish the pop bar. 100 percent ridiculous Figure amount of percentage, but you just can't cover as much water yes. with that pop bar. Let's 
seem to be real aggressive though, that's the problem. Throw my spy bait up there next. Toby still with just three keepers. Kind of in between a, a so band of this weird. storm that's moving yeah. through. It's the back end of it almost. It's coming. I, I'll tell you one thing that that Crazy. Went back when I fished here a lot, you would hear that all the time. Like you'd be in the inland sea and there'd be two to three foot waves, and I would hear guys be like, "Dude, it was dead flat calm on the New York side." <laughs> and you're like, "What are you talking about?" It's and really strange. We were talking about it. We thought that maybe his areas might be protected from the wind, from the southeast wind fighters marinas. But looking at Windfinder in the direction, they just, it is blowing right into the mouth of not only San Albans, but also the one he's been fishing down at the bottom of the Inland Sea. It's, it's getting going right towards it. Obviously, there's a lot of land that can protect it, but it is a clear straight shot the way it's coming from Mallets. Five bites to catch one. That's so strange. Compare Brandon Polinick's scene to what it looked like where he was an hour ago. Polinick just a pound off the lead. Hartman 12 ounces off the lead. This is going to be a crazy rest of the day in this event. Oh, yeah. Seriously. It's gonna, yeah, it's going to be a nail biter oh, okay. well, all the way in. Slick water and everything. Moving around. Not loving the fish stuff. not eating. Just trying to fish some new stuff. Not necessarily new stuff I looked at in practice, but places I haven't fished in the last three days. Just trying to find another, another group of them somewhere. Seth Fighter say it a few minutes ago, don't put the crankbait down for the rest of the day. Ed Lofgren, 16 and a half pounds on the day. Popped into fifth, but uh, probably more than likely he's sixth with Jason Williamson's bass track being down. He's a wild card, I think, Jason Williamson. Definitely. I think he is anyway. Gosh, he's fighting so hard. I can't even stop him. He's gonna come up and jump. He's a good one, he ain't that big, but he's a really good one. Ah, uh, he's got the back hook too. Gosh, you're mighty. Maybe I need to change colors. It's a pretty one. He's got 
the very back hook. Try to swing him right here. Still a pretty good one. I thought he was better than his 2 2. He's healthy. Hey, it's a slow morning. Oh. He is absolutely in the game. Mm -hmm. Absolutely in the game. Right in there. Mm. He's only been cranking for Let's get an right. hour. Good point. Yeah. He wasn't good even point. doing this deal. Sitting right there. And he moved because it was too rough. Yeah, things are swapping around. One decent cull here for Jamie Hartman, and he's back in the lead. That was a flurry. Yeah. That was a big time flurry. But though, you know, it's 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 I'm texting back and forth with a lot of folks that are watching this. You do not. It it is a fun lake to fish to catch three to four pound bass, but you do not get those opportunities of those heavy fours to a five pounder. We got we got to see that all week long. They just there is not a giant population of those in here this time of year. It's encouraging for Mullins to see that. Yes. That he got a big bite, but it's also discouraging because it's not like it's a Tennessee River school where every one of them in the school is five pounds. Right. No. That could have been the five pounder that right. he needed and might not have one for another three miles. Jimmy Hartman actually said he caught a lot of fish swim baiting here in practice. Tommy, uh, we come back at noon Eastern. We're going to take our ESPN hour two. off. Right, right, from here on Bassmaster.com. Thank you. And the app. We return in one hour's time, noon today, Eastern time, on ESPN2. Yeah. Bringing the final three hours of fishing on this all important championship Sunday. We have seen a lot of changes, a lot of action today. The way in, don't forget. Bassmaster.com, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. And we'll get everything official. All the weights we're seeing right now are unofficial. Could be off by as much as half a pound. We have enjoyed being with you this morning, and we look forward to seeing you this afternoon on Bassmaster Live.